Taoiseach, over the last few days I've had the honour and privilege of meeting some very fine um, Irish men and women indeed on the bus air and picket lines. Um, one of them, a man called Tommy St. Ledger in Broadstone, has worked 51 years of his life in Bus Aaron, is due to retire on June on a glorious pension of €97 Euro a week, having given his entire adult life and some of his childhood uh, to Bus Aaron. Uh, Rory, from your neck of the woods in the west of Ireland, takes home about €600 Euro a week, and that includes all the premiums and his overtime. And he's a man with a growing family in college. Michael, who's a new worker, takes home about €450 Euro a week, and that includes all his premiums. And he's a young man with a mortgage and uh, children so small that he's now doing picket duty in the evenings to avoid having to pay childcare while he's on strike. So I want to ask you directly, Taoiseach, to answer me this. Do you think anyone could justify taking 30% of the wages of these three people I've given you an example of? Because that is what's being proposed by Bus Aaron in their uh, attack on the pay and conditions of workers throughout the country. And there is a crisis in the company. I'm not going to stand here and deny that there is a deficit, that there's a, that there's a crisis. But it's not a crisis like, uh, you know, a volcano in Iceland or uh, a, a storm that hits the west coast of Ireland. It's not a force of nature. It is a crisis of the creation of this and previous governments. And I'm going to stand over that statement because the National Transport Authority, for whom your cabinet has responsibility, have deliberately uh, swamped the main bus routes between the cities of Dublin, Limerick, Dublin Cork, Dublin Galway, etc., with private operators. They have over licensed to capacity beyond 100% of what's needed. And at the same time, this and the previous government have consistently cut the subsidy uh, to the bus airing. The subsidy bus airing get as a public transport company is 12%. Guess how much they get in Belgium? In Belgium, they get 78% to run public transport. In Holland, 49%. Ireland gives its public transport companies the lowest subsidy of most of the developing Europe, European countries. On top of that, we subsidise a, a social function of the transport to allow for free travel. And I have a letter here from Minister Varadkar which clearly shows that we give to the private operator 70% of a subsidy for that free travel and 40% to bus airing. This is not a level, play, a level playing field. The crisis in bus airing is manufactured consistently and continually by this government and the previous government. And then we have the extraordinary situation where a Minister for Transport, who is on multiple the wages of these people who work hard day in, day out, says, nothing to do with me. I'm the Minister for Thank Transport. You, I'm not intervening in a national transport strike. Two questions, Taoiseach. Explain that last position. How do you have a Minister for Transport who has nothing to do with a national transport strike? And my first question, can you justify cutting 30% of the wages of those people whose earnings I've just described? Thank you, Deputy Taoiseach. Uh, I think it's, it's important to note that the, uh, the trade unions and the management have both publicly, publicly acknowledged that there are efficiency issues in respect of the bus air and situation, both sides. And that's precisely why the, uh, the WRC is still available in respect of talks to resolve this, because it won't be resolved on the streets. It won't be resolved on the streets. It'll only be resolved around the table where all other strikes are resolved. And that's exactly the interest that Minister Ross has identified on so many occasions, that that's the opportunity to sort this out. I understand your, your legitimate, your legitimate um, um, comment in respect of the drivers here and those who work for Bus Air. Last year, the taxpayer provided €230 million Euro to Bus Air across the PSO scheme, the free travel scheme, the capital and the school transport funding programmes. And that's a significant amount of money which has been increasing over the last number of years. Um, funding for the public service obligation uh, units have, has increased over the last two budgets. But subvention is provided only for the PSO services. It cannot by law be provided on a commercial service like Expressway. And that's where the difficulty is. Uh, so this is a, a dispute within Bus Air and involving, among other things, that commercial service. Now I know that one union has announced 
for ballot members in other companies, uh, companies which are not party to this dispute. And I hope that that doesn't happen, because the opportunity is still here uh, for, the, uh, for the unions and the management to get together. Minister Ross is playing his part uh, through increasing PSO funding, and Minister Varadkar in examining the funding of the free travel scheme, and where he can act, and where it's appropriate to do so, he has acted. Realistic negotiations, Deputy Smith, between management and unions are required to solve these internal issues, and that opportunity is there for them at the WRC. And because so many people are now inconvenienced here, and because this is causing so much stress for people who have no access to public transport at all uh, in many areas of the country, I would, I would suggest that the point has been made here. The resolution of this, the solution to it, uh, is at the table of the WRC. Both sides have admitted that there are efficiency issues to be addressed. Both sides should have the courage to go back again uh, and attempt to resolve those differences where these efficiencies are being considered. That's where the solution lies. And the government, obviously, are very interested that this strike should end and that people should be able to have bus air in doing what it can do best, which is provide a service uh, in, a way that's, uh, in a way that can deal with the um, issue of the express, expressway uh, loss-making entity and deal with that, and that's the place to deal with it at the WRC. Thank you, Taoiseach. Now, well, Taoiseach, you, your, your answer that this is commercial competition really flags up why this is of interest to every transport worker, not just to bus errand workers, because the NTA have deliberately forced bus errand into an unlevel playing field of competition with the private operator in order to drag down the wages and conditions of workers. And this will apply to Dublin bus, to the Dart and to uh, Irish Rail. If the NTA and your government manage to drag people down in bus Sarah, they'll drag them down everywhere. So this strike is of interest to other transport workers and it is indeed of interest to the public in general who are suffering as a result of the strike but will more suffer if you and your government get your way in dimin diminishing the jobs and conditions of public transport workers. So tomorrow Taoiseach, will you come out to the gates with me at one o'clock and welcome the hundreds of bus workers, rail workers, DART workers and Dublin bus workers who will come outside the gates to say to Minister Ross at committee, you cannot wipe your hands of this. You are involved. Your government is involved. The NTA is involved. You must participate in the solution to this strike. And you must participate in the solution to this crisis. Ultimately, the power is on the streets. The power will be outside the gates at one o'clock tomorrow. You, and if he doesn't listen to that, then a national transport strike will be required. He'll have to listen to DART workers, Dublin bus workers, Lewis workers, train drivers, when they down tools and say, listen, workers are not going to be dragged in a race to the bottom by the policies of this government and the Minister you, must Deputy. get involved. Taoiseach. Um, Minister Ross is before the Transport Committee tomorrow. I understand at the time of the protests taking place. I should point out for you, Deputy Smith, that the government have actually increased the public service obligation funding by €28 million Euro in the, each of the last two years. Today is, the today is the 28th of March. This is the fifth day of all-out strike at Bus Aaron. And, you know, the biggest impact, the biggest impact is on Bus Aaron's PSO network. That's where the biggest impact is. Because on the expressway network, which is the root cause of this particular problem, there are other competitors who take up the slack when there's no Bus Aaron there. And, that's, and, and so, the, so, the, so the, the expressway service, which is the root cause of this problem, is least, is least affected by this. Is least affected by this, Deputy Smith. Is least affected by this, Deputy Smith. The expressway service is least affected because there are other buses travelling on that route. Uh, and from, uh, apart from some spillover strike action on Friday, which impacted on Eardon Road there, and the other CIE companies have been unaffected. Thank you, Tisha. The SIP2 has on Monday announced it will ballot its members in Dublin bus and Eardon Road there for industrial action. No date for balloting has been set yet. But I would say to people, uh, they're perfectly entitled to protest, and protest can, be, can send powerful signals when it's legitimate, of course. But the, the, the solution and the resolution to this strike, Deputy Smith, is not outside the gate of Leinster House. It's around the WRC table. Both sides have admitted that there are issues that need to be discussed, and that's the opportunity for Thank them to Peter. discuss those Minister at the WRC. For Minister, you know, you know, Deputy Smith, 
that a minister cannot sit at that table because nobody else, everybody else would then say, well, here's the government stepping in here for all of these issues. Now, you know that very well. And Minister Ross... Minister Ross is doing his duty with the PSO by increasing that, Minister Varadkar, in terms of the rural transport scheme. But the unions and management say there are efficiency matters that need to be discussed here, and the place to discuss those is at the WRC table. Thank you, Tisha. That concludes leaders' questions.